Ja, hallo, guten Abend und herzlich willkommen im Deutschen Filmmuseum. Ja, wir freuen uns sehr, ähm, die langjährige, mittlerweile kann man schon sagen, Kooperation mit dem Filmkollektiv Frankfurt fortzusetzen. Heute Abend, es gab schon Veranstaltungen zu Miklos Young Show, zu Lightcorn, ähm, zu Steven Torskin. Ich glaube, die drei waren es bisher. Ähm, jetzt gibt es äh, in K eine Werkschau, die hier im Filmmuseum jetzt eröffnet wird heute und am Freitag und Samstag in der Pupille im äh, Campus Bockenheim Studierendenhaus fortgesetzt wird vom Filmkollektiv. Und es wird, da kann man jetzt schon gleich darauf hinweisen, im Juni eine Werkschau zum schwedischen Regisseur Bu Widerberg geben. Mitte Juni hier, um vom Leichnam das Wochenende herum. Das wird auf jeden Fall auch sehr spannend werden und das wird ein, ja, das nächste größere Projekt dann sozusagen, das dann im Filmmuseum auch stattfindet, ähm, in Kooperation mit dem Filmkollektiv. Ja, jetzt wünsch, äh, begrüße ich erstmal Gary Vanisian. Gary Vanisian vom Filmkollektiv, ähm, der dann kurz nach Einleiten etwas sagen wird und dann auch die anwesende Regisseurin vorstellen wird. Ja, vielen Dank Andreas. Ja, schönen guten Abend auch meinerseits und namens des Filmkollektiv Frankfurt. Ja, wie schön, dass ihr heute, äh, dass ihr, sie heute Abend alle den Weg her gefunden habt und äh, wir sind sehr überglücklich, dass wir nun die seit knapp einem Jahr, neun Monaten ungefähr, geplante und organisierte Werkschau ähm, Bangkok Joyride Werkschau Inka eröffnen können. Und äh, ja, Inka ist seit gestern Abend in Frankfurt und ich möchte euch äh, alle bitten, sehr herzlich zu begrüßen. Ink, please, warm welcome in Frankfurt. Genau, ich ich sage noch kurz ein, ein paar einleitende Worte. Ink hat, wie ich gestern erfahren habe, in ihrer Schulzeit drei Jahre Deutsch gelernt. Deshalb ähm, kann ich es mir erlauben, ein paar Worte, und ich habe auch ihr von gesagt, was ich ungefähr sagen würde, noch einige Begrüßungen zu machen. Also genau, ich be be beglückwünsche euch alle zu der Entscheidung, heute Abend hierher zu kommen, denn was wir heute Abend sehen werden, ist die einzige existierende 16 mm kopie dieses Films, der derzeit auch nur in dieser Form vorliegt. Und also sagen, einerseits die Anwesenheit von Ink, aber auch eben die Seltenheit dieser Kopie. Und ohne viel von der Diskussion nach dem Film vorwegnehmen zu wollen, aber der Film ist in Thailand verboten, ist dort noch nie öffentlich gezeigt worden. Und damit einherging auch die Befürchtung, dass es nicht ungefährlich sein könnte, die Kopie über, ähm, ja, Ink ist mit dem Flugzeug gekommen, durch die Grenzkontrollen zu bringen bei einem Film, der eben verboten ist in Thailand. Deshalb, und eine Versand über FedEx oder andere Kuriere schien uns auch nicht ganz sicher. Deshalb ähm, war es uns letztlich dank der wunderbaren und wunderbar unkomplizierten Hilfe des Institut Français in Bangkok und insbesondere äh, der Kulturreferentin Vanessa Sylvie möglich, diese Kopie via Diplomatengepäck äh, erst nach Paris zu bringen und dann von Paris aus äh, habe ich sie äh, nach Frankfurt gebracht vor einigen Wochen, wo sie in den innerhalb der letzten Wochen von dem, wie ich finde, dem äh, europaweit besten Digitalisierungslabor äh, LSP Medien in Uelzen äh, digitalisiert worden ist, damit der Film auch künftig ähm, ja, in Kinos, in denen eine analoge Projektion nicht möglich ist, weiterhin gezeigt werden kann. Und dank Ings Einverständnis können wir auch jetzt aber trotzdem noch Natürlich die 16 mm kopie zeigen, vorgeführt von Günter Volkmann, dem ich an dieser Stelle sehr herzlich danke, dass er das heute übernommen hat. Und genau, und das muss, muss, möchte ich auch noch erwähnen als kleines Schmankerl. Es ist die erste, ich, ich habe vorhin mit äh, Ink noch gesprochen, es ist wirklich die erste Vorführung dieses Films in Europa, die wir heute haben. Er ist vorher in Hawaii gelaufen, in Singapur, in New York, aber in Europa noch nicht. Und genau, ich möchte sehr herzlich Natascha Gikas danken und Andreas Beilhals vom Deutschen Filmmuseum, dass wir heute hier sein dürfen. Wir freuen uns sehr und äh, eben die beste Projektion ähm, ja, der, der Stadt, der Gegend hier zu haben, 16 mm. Ferner möchte ich Manni Zrivanich Bum danken, dem Partner, langjährigen Partner von Ing, der auch in der Vorbereitung der ähm, dieses Werkschau sehr hilfreich war. Ich, Entschuldige mich, dass ich etwas lange spreche, aber ich, äh, es ist die Eröffnung dieser Retrospektive und wir müssen auch an der Stelle noch ähm, danken der Hessen Film und Medien GmbH, die diese Reihe finanziell unterstützt. Ebenso möchte ich noch darauf hinweisen, dass äh, Nicole Brenes, die französische Filmwissenschaftlerin, ähm, ja sozusagen, dass ich durch ein Interview, das Nicole Brenes mit Ink geführt hat, ähm, ja, sozusagen auf diese Reihe äh, oder auf die Möglichkeit dieser Reihe aufmerksam geworden bin. Und genau, und Ink wird dann ihre Filme in einer Woche beim Festival Cinema du Riel in Paris zeigen. Und ja, nach einem freien Tag morgen, während dem sie Gelegenheit haben werden, äh, ihren Freunden Bekannten von dieser Reihe zu erzählen, setzt sich dann die Reihe im Freitag und Samstag im Studierendenhaus in Bockenheim fort. Aber dazu noch mehr nach dem Film. 
And now, dear Ink, um, yeah, I would like to ask you um, to say some words before the screening and wish you again a warm welcome in Frankfurt. Okay, thank you. And thank you for coming. Uh, this, uh, you, this is actually the first, uh, it's a very silly movie. Before this, making this film, I, I used to be an environmental investigative reporter. So I used to make films that would make people very, very guilty or angry and so on. And what, this is my first feature. And we, it's my film school. And we just wanted to do, we were very free. And we wanted to make something f fun and silly, you know, like uh, Pink Flamingo. You know, you're able to make... How, no one had made a film this way before in Thailand. It's the first shoestring indie film, full-length film ever in the history of Thai cinema. But Thai people haven't seen it because it's been it's banned uh, for as a disrespect, you know, to all religion, not just Buddhism, every religion. I don't know how that is possible. <laughs> but so when you hear that the film is banned and quite violently, they even dragged me to parliament to have a big inquisition well, I'm sitting in the middle and they're all around me like in a courtroom. It was horrible, really nasty, nasty thing. So hearing that, you will expect like super serious, you know, film or something. But it's not. You, it's like banning Pink Flamingo, really. Because it's, 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 we want something silly and fun and, you know, that I could use my family and friends make it for very little because we use this house, that house. I wrote a script around what I could beg and borrow and steal. And, and he, I hope you enjoy it. And later, um, we were shocked when we were banned because we didn't expect, you know, we had a fun time. We didn't expect such a horrible reaction. But later when I saw Skim Through It and then I realized that I suppose I'm making fun of the way they think, of the way the censor think. That's why they can't stand it. Yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. Genau, und dann nach dem Film gibt es noch eine Diskussion mit äh, Ink. Du sagst ja auch, hat sich eingeladen, sind Fragen zu stellen. Gute Projektion. Yeah, so now uh, I will start asking Inge a few questions and then open up the floor quite soon to your questions and then we can also talk about the other films of Ink uh, that we're going to see in the next days. Um, yeah, Ink, so I guess uh, you must have had a lot of fun doing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> or? Um, yeah, yeah, although it's very hard because I didn't know until one week before we began shooting that I had to do it. I had to be the arch villainess. It was actually supposed to be the chief Tai Chi man. You see the Tai Chi man in the front with the beard and mustache. He was supposed to be that, but he last minute he was scared. He was the only one who knew that we would have a lot of problem. I didn't know. And so he said, he, he's a foreign resident. He's a Malaysian. And he said, I can't do this. I'm worried about my visa. So the last minute I had to change sex of the man uh, into a woman because it's one week, we had no time to find anyone and everyone else was already in front and behind the camera. And so that's why we had the past life because I wanted to keep him as a former monk. So yeah, yeah it was pretty crazy. It was our film school. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the people involved, the, the, ac the actress, so mm -hmm. to say, they they were your friends or real actors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, although the one that played Robin, he's a big star now in Thailand, but this was his first film. But uh, the Cherry Pie, Tarini Fiona Graham, she's in Shakespeare Must Die as Lady Macbeth. But yeah, those two are trained actors, but everybody else, you know, just people around me. Yeah. Who's the actor of this uh, incredible character, Victor Strong? Oh, he's the producer. He gets the biggest part because he could come every time. <laughs> because, you know, we were shooting, everyone was working for free and we were shooting on weekends because everybody had jobs in Monday to Friday. So he got the biggest part because I could shoot him in close-up. <laughs> so it just came like that. Yeah, just came out like that. 
how did the idea for the movie come along uh, at, at all? So at, at what uh, kind of to what time does this this uh, date back the first idea you had for the movie? Was it a very spontaneous decision to do it, or did you Barely. think about it for a long time? No, no, it's not like not like Macbeth that I thought about all my life before I made it. Um, this was this was like an exercise, an experiment. What? Can we make a film the way you know John Waters makes a film, you know, with very little, with non-actors, and even if the acting is bad, can it just still work if we write it in a certain way, so you can even recite it and it's still okay? Um, what uh, I had my dog. Uh, I what did I have? It began. What do we have? I can borrow that house. Can borrow that house, and actually, I, in my teens, I grew up in uh, in in England. I uh, went to school in England in my teens, in a house. The house I was in was very, I suppose, new agey. It was a bit like an ashram. There was a lot of precious, you know. I saw a lot of that scene. That whole guru. Um, meditation, um, you know, that whole making fun of rich people, and I could see that some of these monks were very false, and but they were, you know, people would believe anything they want to believe. So, so maybe yeah, these are things that I always thought about my whole life. Yeah, so, so I copied actually. Some of the things seem exaggerated. Even a mushroom, you see that in Thai newspapers all the time. People worship like, oh, there's a banana that that grew uh, unusually large flowers, um, like in the shape of an eagle or something. And people would go and ask for lottery numbers. You know, it's I I think Thai people really do have a fun sense of uh, sacred because we're animists, really. Okay, we are Buddhists, but actually we believe in fairies and ghosts and all these things. And and at heart, we also laugh at ourselves. I know we do. You know, whatever we do, we we know, we know it's it's bullshit. But we, it's, we but it's okay. I mean, the explanation at the end it seems really outrageous, but in a way, it's the way we think. And and like the abbot at the beginning in the scene where he's talking with the junior monk, saying, oh, um, you know, all that bullshit. It's exactly how the censors talk to you or authorities talk to you. Like, I, if I say so, then that's the reality. And everyone says, accepts that reality or not. And I think, I think the whole world's like that. It's like, do you accept Trump's reality or you don't accept? You know, it's people make up. Uh, they construct the reality, and they do you give them their consent? And at a certain point, if the people no longer give their consent in your reality, everything falls down. But you can see, I mean, I think you really know that in Germany, right? Just like we do. I mean, one minute everything, everyone believes it. Next minute, nobody does. So at heart, I suppose I want to talk about that. Maybe it's sub subconsciously, yeah. So, um, in, in in the beginning, before the film, you mentioned that this is the first Thai shoestring yeah. independent <laughs> film yeah. so, uh, made this way, so complete outsiders. Yeah. So how uh, well? I mean, we talk. You mentioned now how this idea came about. So how do you set off to make a shoestring independent film? Well, as I said, by thinking first, what do I have? And then I wrote the script around that. And in a way, I, I work in that way to this day. I mean, I work in that way. Um, bec I try to go through the studio system and it, you know, it's just a total waste of time. They steal your ideas, they steal your title, they steal everything. And, you know, bye-bye. Um, so in the end, I just... I'm just going to make what I can make on the scale that I can make with what I can afford. What You know, Fuji film, I forgot that I gave them a big advertisement on the <laughs> car ride because they gave us free film, you know, that kind of stuff. We just, uh, he, the producer, he's very good at getting favors and all that. And we bought a camera, we bought the RE2, 
Yeah, the sixteen because it it would be cheaper than renting. We bought it second hand um, and sold it after. So you know, the whole thing costs us less than a million baht, which is I don't know forty baht, one euro. I don't know what that is. This is twenty years ago, but. Yeah, uh, that was my mother in there. I mean, I used everyone, everyone around me. Nobody was safe. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, you can try to make, uh, you can say, I'll wait until I have everything perfect before I make a film. Yes, it would be nice to have wonderful actors. Uh, later, I've, I had a chance to work with some wonderful actors, and that's fantastic. That is so great. But, you know, you don't always have that. And I just... I just think it's better than not making a film at all. Just make one that you can get kind of halfway there. It's still better than nothing, rightly, rightly or wrongly. I, I mean, I can recut that again easily and make it much shorter. But, and I think I will. But, um, so um, yeah. I, I think that there are probably two main elements of influence to the film. So one you have already mentioned, independent cinema in the tradition or in the style of John Waters, and the mm -hmm. other is um, well, horror films, I would also mention, because in the dream sequences you have quite a strong, um, well, it, it is related to mm -hmm. uh, horror images and the way you, you, you lit. Um, so maybe could you tell a bit more when uh, you first met with those two um, elements of influence? When did you first get acquainted with um, this well, in independent cinema, as, as you mentioned, John Waters, and uh, mm. on, on the other hand with these elements which uh, seem to drive a bit towards horror, horror films, well, uh, gore movies? Well, the horror is somebody told me a really interesting thing. I, I, I've been saying that I, my fantasy, my dream, is to make a straight horror, horror film, which, which I've never done. I really, really want to, because I'm a horror fa fan. And then, you know, I grew up in the 70s, and that's like golden age of amazing, amazing horror. But, and someone said, but you do. Even when you make a documentary straight about anything or uh, whatever, it's always a horror movie, whatever you make. And that don't you know that even this film is a horror? Um, I suppose so. I, I think I'm drawn to the dark side. I mean, what is horror? And then you go back to Shakespeare, right? What is horror? The horror, horror, horror. Um, it's seeing... Seeing, seeing yourself, seeing... Um, confronting uh, fearlessly, looking into whatever you want to look into without flinching, really, and just a lot of the horror for me is is falsehood, you know, parading as truth. That's the ultimate horror to me, actually. Yeah, so. Could you say a few words about the choice of music, the way you uh, used music in this film? Again, again, it's that's just no budget decision. This, this is this is uh, you buy uh, buy out CDs. Do you know what they are? You buy these CDs. They're a little bit more expensive than normal CDs, but it means you can use them in any movie as many times as you want. So of course they're mostly just classical music that you know the rights of expired. And uh, I think they were like three hundred dollars or something, and then you can just keep using them. And we, for this kind of crazy film, I thought it was okay, you know. <laughs> so, so it's got all these corny, you know, stuff. So we just use that. Yeah, it all comes from uh, comes from necessity. Yeah, I I I just flow with the um, obstacles. You know, you don't run into the wall, you go around the rock, like water. You go around the rock, you go down. That's the first image in the film, right? Because you flow, go with the flow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, in the beginning we mentioned that um, the film well, was banned. Mm. Uh, could you tell uh, a few more um, details about 
well, why it was banned and then... Uh, yeah, well, I like to know. Yeah. You know, I mean, I look at it and it's like, um, well, I think I know. I think it's because I'm making fun. I, I made this film because all the films I made before that, all the documentaries, people would fight. Like, end of screenings, you have people actually argue among themselves, going, I'll see you outside. And, and I remember thinking, oh, I want to make something that's, you know, just silly and fun and not so serious or something uh, but it turns out that if you if you laugh at something people are 10 times angrier it, it instead of being uh okay it's not okay you know at all so yeah i learned that i learned that lesson but doesn't mean that i will follow it but i learned <laughs> yeah their reaction was extraordinary they were really really like venomous about it they were so they hated it they were like wow yeah unbelievable so strong you know shakespeare must die is banned too and even worse as a national security threat right i mean wow shakespeare you know macbeth right but um and the same very strong reaction i think it's just the way i think just annoys them just, they just don't like the way I think. They don't like that I make fun of things that they think is holy. Probably that's probably what it is. Yeah. It's maybe what it's maybe a, I don't know a wild wild guess, but uh, um, well, you 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 read now and then that uh, the less majesty laws in Thailand also would um, punish people making fun of the king's dogs. So, and uh, I don't know, is is it might yeah, might that be this, something this to do is with funny. that? No. This is what pe people actually said to me, you're unbelievable, you're like a fortune teller. Because this is before the king had the dog, okay? This, I say it right now, I made this film years, years and years before the king became photographed with his dog and before people started wearing pink. In you know, For a while people were wearing pink to worship the king. I'm talking about the ex-king, right? The, I mean, the past king who just died. Um, this was before all of that, and I swear to you that I didn't think of that at all. Really, not at all. Uh, but they did say that the princess worshipping the dog at the end, the princess that was making fun of the king's sister. So, you know, you cannot win with these people. They're just like the abbot. The reality is what they say it is. If they say this film is, is uh, evil poison, then it is, because they say so and they have the power. You know, it's like Alice in Wonderland. I mean, cut off with your head and <laughs> nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it's, still, it's, it's, I learned that, yeah. Yeah, it's shocking actually, because Thailand normally, if you live normal life and everything, it's such a tolerant country. I mean, it's, do whatever you want, you know? It's okay. I mean, everything is a laugh, no problem. But the minute, but the official culture, that's the, that's the people's culture. But the official culture, there's a big gap between the normal people and the official culture. I'm not talking about government. I'm talking about the bureaucracy. I'm talking about the state. I'm talking about something much bigger than just a single government. It's, when it's so crazy, it, it, it's fascistic. It's from the 30s. Yeah. And when, when you run into that, it's like, what you you what country am am I in? What planet am I? You it's shocking, yeah. Because totally the opposite of what we are. Yeah, you cannot believe it. Yeah. Are there any questions in the audience regarding this film? Because um, if not, we could maybe. Um, Because if not, we, we could maybe um, also talk about, uh, well, uh, extending the, the war is not only about this film, but maybe also about, well, the path which led you to cinema. Uh, could you maybe tell me, you mentioned before you were an environmental journalist before, so yeah. how, how, well, when did you start well, thinking about doing films yourself? Yeah, well, I, the, when, you, you, when you write about the environment, um, the many things are unbelievable. This is, we're talking 80s, okay, 1980s. So there are hardly anybody writing about the environment, especially about tourism, 
and you know rest- hotels in national parks and so on. So when I always had a problem with the editors, they always gave me a hard time. They don't believe me. Uh, and the only way to make people believe me is to take a camera to the problem, film it, and show them. So then I got into documentary filmmaking, and and then yeah, from there. Yeah. Just to mention, on on Friday at 4 p.m. we'll show uh, one of your early works which you did for television, Casino Cambodia. Mm. Um, That's the film just before that one, this one. Yeah, Uh, my documentaries are very different because, you know, everything is free in a documentary. You just shoot it. So, of course, you know, people are very shocked when I made this this film because that's not you. That's how can you make this crazy film like that? You know, um, before that, I made a film about golf courses, about who gets to write history. Casino Cambodia is about who gets to write history. Because I used to work in a refugee camp on the Thai-Cambodian border. Um, I dropped out of art school, actually, because of a film. I saw a film on TV, and I, I felt stupid studying art. So I quit and went home to work in a refugee camp. And with that film, I went looking for the people I used to work with in the same hospital in the, on the border, including Hang Ngo, the Cambodian actor who won the Oscar for Killing Fields. And he become a logger, you know. It's like that kind of stuff. It's quite shocking. But, you know, when you make a documentary, nothing on the screen costs you anything. You know, I can have a, like, Bangkok Joyride, the last films about the protests, shut down Bangkok protests. It's super minimalist. Um, For Shakespeare Must Die, I had a proper crew, cast, you know, everything, because we had funding. But with Bangkok Joyride, it's just one iPhone and me. But millions of people. And I didn't have to pay for a single one. I didn't have to pay for any of it. I just had to keep working. I just had to be, uh, not quit, and keep going out in the hot sun and shoot day after day after day after day. And then, you know, just hard work, and that's fine. You know? So, yeah, that's the big difference. I mean, people say, why don't you make more realistic feature films? Well, I can't afford it. Because to make realistic feature films, you have to pay for everything on the screen. You have to close the road. You have to... You know, costs a lot of money. So, yeah, well, give me a lot of money and then I will. <laughs> I can. I, I mean, like, Shakespeare must die. Every time, every time anything I couldn't afford, I would put on the theater stage, like in a stage, like with cheap swords, because I can't have tanks in the street in a coup d'etat, which is what I really want. But, you know, I can't. So it's no point dreaming about that. So that that kind of thing. It's just compromises you make, you know. So. So, but um, following f- following my teacher eats biscuits, you um, for some time obviously you s- stopped f- fil- filming, uh, and because you're not not only an journalist and, and filmmaker but also a painter, and uh, as, as I understand, yeah, I went uh, back I understand, to art. yeah, as, as a as a sign of protest against the film world, or because you were. No, well, no, because I was wasting time trying to go through the system. I wasted time, as I was telling you. Yeah, I wrote two good scripts and went nowhere. And I said, the hell with this, you know. So, yeah. And so, yeah. so, so then the, the next... Shakespeare, I got the money from the Ministry of Culture. So, who would then ban the film? And they funded it. So, really, yeah. Well, actually, we have, because we've mentioned it a couple of times now, we have prepared um, a trailer, uh, well, the trailer for yeah, Shakespeare Must Die, um, which so the film will be shown on Friday at 6.30 in the Pupilla Cinema. And uh, Christian, can you do trailer? So we'll watch, watch, just have a look at the trailer of Shakespeare Must Die.
บางครั้งเพื่อที่จะนำพาเราสู่หายนะเครื่องมือแห่งความมืดอาจบอกความจริงแก่เราหลอกให้เราตายใจด้วยรางวัลน,น้อยนิดที่ไร้ผิดภัยเพียงเพื่อจะหักหลังเรายัางโหดเยี่ยมในที่สุดอนิจจาบ้านเมืองนาวีชนาศพของเรานักสแสดงของคุณหน้าตาคล้ายท่านผู้นำมากนี่คุณตั้งใจหรือเปล่าอันนิจาบ้านเมืองนาเวทนาแทบไม่กล้ารู้จักตัวเองไม่บังอาเรียกว่าแผ่นดินแม่ที่แท้คือลุมศพของเราไม่มีรอยยิ้มบนใบหน้าล้วนแต่คนบ้าผู้ไม่รับรู้สิ่งอันใดยินแต่เสียงถอดถอนลมหายใจครวนครางเสียงรำไห้อื้ออึงไปทั่วเมืองบาบินและแนวแนวไม่มีใครเห็นเป็นเรื่องแปลแม้จะแหลกทุกระทมสุดพันนานากลับประมาเป็นเรื่องธรรมดาและละไม้เป็นธรรมดาเมื่อรักครั้งประหารเรื่องเบื่อหน่ายแสนผิดหน้าลงทั้งโลกาพาอายุเชิญโหมมาเลยไฮยนะโหมเข้ามาได้เลยอย่างน้อยเราจะได้ตายคาดาบในมือเ
that kind of stuff. I mixed the blood myself because we used lots of blood because, you know, like bath, lots and lots of blood. Um, I don't know. Um, Shakespeare must die. We were shooting in the middle of a really crazy time in Thailand too, 2010. So we were absorbing all the all the bad vibes and as you should, I think you should. You can't help it because everyone's living through these things and then they, you know. So. Do you see yourself as a as a do you see yourself as a political filmmaker or as a f filmmaker with a political approach or do you just? Mm, uh, I I see myself as an exorcist, actually. Yeah. Um, I want to exorcise the national soul. I'm very ambitious, <laughs> but but by I the means of Shakespeare. <laughs> yes, I think Shakespeare is the best, the best exorcism you can have. I really do. I mean, I said that I there was no translation. I mean, I had to translate it, you know, from Thai, and I had to stick closely to it because there are many things I knew were very sensitive about Macbeth. Um, we were living under somebody who was very like uh, Macbeth. And, you know, the whole monarchy thing uh, and all of that, you know, they were, they gave th this film fund, they gave money to a lot of films. But, uh, we were the last film to get the money. And we were the only film that had to send a script. Everyone else just had an outline and they got the money. Uncle Bun Me was the first film that got money from this funding. Um, it was already finished. They gave money for it, for them to fly all the actors to Cannes and so on. But uh, we were we were the only one that you know we had to show. We even had to show some shoot some of that scene of the killing of the king, regicide scene before uh, they would let us uh, give us the money. Really, we had to work really hard to get the money. Everyone else was quite easy. Um, it's very, it's, it's, but I stuck exactly to Shakespeare because, you know, why not? This is school children all over the world learn from this, you know, Macbeth. I mean, everywhere. So why, why not Thai people? Because it wasn't colonized. So Shakespeare is not part of our culture at all. It was a very interesting experiment because, you know, where in the world can you find people who don't know Shakespeare, who never experienced it? Well, Thailand, come to Thailand, you know. It's, it's, um, there's no other Shakespearean film, only that, and it's banned. I mean, how can you do that, you know? So, but there are many things that are very resonant with, the, with our situation. Uh, well, I would like to ask a question also to to um, ask you to elaborate on a thing which we haven't mentioned yet, namely the um, your your cooperation with um, Manit Srivanishpun, um, who is well not only the producer of Shakespeare Must Die, Censor Must Die, and other films, but also the DOP as well for My Teacher It's Biscuits as Shakespeare Must Die. Um, so I would also, in that sense, like to ask you how you well, work together with the DOP, uh, with the art department when during filming, and if, if you, um, as a director, would see yourself as somebody coming, let's say, more from the word part in terms of script, or if you say, see yourself also just as visual. No, no, I mean, this is no Hollywood production, so we everyone does everything. I'm the production designer, so I'm the head of the art department, really. And the DP, basically, I met Manit making this film, and... But yeah, and I eloped with him, I ran off with him. So uh, that's the only reason I can have this uh, famous, he's a famous photo artist. Um, his work's like collected all around the world in museums. The only reason I can afford him is because, you know, he's my husband. <laughs> but, you know, lucky me. But yeah, but yeah, I'm very the look of a film like Shakespeare Must Die. I, we were able to add to the production value because I just borrowed artwork, paintings that were worth the whole of the film. You know, the like be very careful with that. That's more than the budget of the whole film. But these things help a lot. You know, so yeah, it has a lot of art in it. Shakespeare Must Die. So. 
Um, to also mention, before Shakespeare Must Die, you made another documentary film, Citizen Juling, which was screened in 2009 at the Berlinale at Toronto before, um, which it was mentioned in the trailer that uh, it was uh, Shakespeare Must Die is a film by the makers of Citizen Juling. Can you uh, tell a few words about Citizen Juling and uh, what this film is about? So Citizen Juling is going to be shown on Saturday at 1 p.m. But oh, I, I call it a long, strange trip through Thailand Seoul because that's exactly what it is you know I I mean I'd stopped making films for 10 years and it was really like my lost decade it's really tough time and and but this film just came to me just like that you know I found a woman crying at an art exhibition in a bathroom and she was a Muslim woman living in Bangkok and the exhibition was by a, a art teacher who had been beaten almost to death in the South, in the Muslim South. And the, the story had the potential to really get into nation, religion, king, touching all the things that you're not supposed to talk about, you know, in Thailand that you can't talk about, but I'm not gonna let anyone say I can't talk about anything. So that's the reason it's so long, because I had to show everything, I could tell nothing, but that's my first digital film. So this is the first time that I could edit freely and learn Final Cut Pro, because in that time, the world had changed, everything had be become digital. But I love it actually, because you can have effects, you can, like this, this film, I can remake it, I can recut it and make it a lot more trippy with, you know, double exposures, whatever, because, and much shorter, because with Final Cut Pro I can. I'm not getting any money from them, by the way. But, you know, it changed your whole way of, uh, my whole way of making a film because you can just do whatever you want. Things that used to cost so much money, now you can just do. If you, you know, just work really hard. Yeah. Well, I, I actually forgot to re-ask, but are there any questions from the audience so far? Hello. So thank you very much for for showing the like that I could see this movie today. And I have two questions. First is about the the movie. Uh, so they have the particular things about religion itself, or is it kind of the case that just the back of the spirituality, back from the religion, it's not not making fun of the people who are believing. I'm just doing what I want. So just what you think about religion. And the second, is it possible? That, uh, because one, most of the movies are banned in Thailand. It, most of your movies are banned in Thailand, Yes, right? uh, actually the only one that passed the censor officially is Juling, Citizen Juling. It's the only one of my films that never had any problem. So what's happening yeah. about, I don't know, DVDs or something like that? Is it possible to buy these movies, to see them otherwise around? Are you? Uh, you I've been working very, very hard trying to change the banning law. You know, there's You're not no trying to do it outside the Thailand, for example, to change the to check the the, the Actually, here. Actually, citizen dueling got me into a lot of trouble too. In another way, um, when we then we have to talk about. I've been black, not just banned in Thailand, but I'm pretty well blacklisted outside the the country as well. Um, to explain how, like, how can you, how can uh, when Citizen Dueling was announced, you know, on the Toronto list, um, they got all these academics, Thai studies academics, writing in and saying, um, this film is royalist, evil, elite propaganda, anti-democratic, blah, blah, blah. And the, the curator told me that the festival will stand by you now, like in the Berlinale too, it came to the Berlinale, and at the beginning, the programmer was really sweet to me, and I hadn't done nothing wrong. And the next minute, another day, he was so cold. I'm just telling you that. And I only found out later how much uh, of a slander, you know. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't get emotional. I shouldn't be talking about this. But, you know, because the person, now the world can see in Trump what we live through. Okay, we had Trump before everybody. We had Thaksin. But in the rest, he has lobbyists in the West. 
So he's Mr. Democracy. But he was killing thousands of people in the South. And Susan Juling, of course, will show that. I, sh I tell nothing. I don't tell you what to think, but I talk to people. You know, you go in the South, you ask them one question. Every single person just cried and cried and cried. Um, and it was so incredible that from that film, I got so much trouble because it wasn't good for our Trump guy. So he pays these academics to, and I, I can say this, and I don't care, they can sue me, whatever. Uh, you can go to New Mandala. There's a website, New Mandala, uh, in Australia. And these um, academics say, I'm in bed with the military. I'm, and they know full well that I, I'm the only one that talks about monarchy, about changing less majesty law. I mean, what other filmmaker talks about changing the law? They know very well, but still, you know, it just... Anyway, because I'm, I'm a bit of a caveman. I didn't even know this was going on, and I didn't defend myself. S silly me. Um, so how? just ask yourself, how can the only Thai Shakespearean film ever, and only existing, that was banned as a threat, a threat against national security by a democratically elected government and made news all over the world, how can that not go anywhere? It didn't come to the Berlinale. It, it didn't go to Toronto. It didn't go anywhere. I mean, it went to Beirut. We won awards in Beirut, okay? Beyond the American Empire uh, and Singapore, right? Outside of American Empire. So, you know, I mean, I really, with, after Juling, and then Shakespeare must die, and then I made Censor must die, which is like, the experience of being banned, I decided to follow my producer with a camera. So I got another film from it. And Censor Must Die, ask yourself, why is there any other film where the filmmaker is showing what it is like to be banned? And that did not go anywhere either. And I knew, I knew even with Shakespeare, I, said, I didn't even bother in the end to send it, you know, because it's not going to go anywhere. I have no place to be in this world. And I have to tell you that, actually, it's very emotional. Thank you. Give me a space today. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I just lived through a lot, man. I'm actually building my own cinema now because I have no place to be. And I know there are other filmmakers who are, you know, in the same position and you know I don't want them to feel like I do and they're, they're younger people they might kill themselves because they're not as tough or as crazy or whatever and I know you have to give people space you have to it's very important what you do well thank you thank you it's very important what you do really I mean Thai people haven't seen this film you know it's a silly movie and we're not allowed to see it it's just like, wow, that's Shakespeare, word for word. Even the pauses, I mean, not allowed. Yeah. So referring to, to, to the question before, so uh, if, yeah, if, uh, yeah, I mean, if, people, if, people, if people in Thailand want to see your films, so you're building a cinema yeah. in order to make it possible for for people to see so but but uh, but uh, otherwise how, how many people do you think have what you you, you did have private screenings of my teacher it's biscuits of shakespeare must die only to some for people. the crew cast and crew yeah only that yeah shakespeare must die they had some screening in the university like secret secretly but every time you you do something like that you risk being fine uh, going to jail for a year two years or a year and being fined 100,000 baht. It's like absurd. That's like $4,000 or something. Like, you know, and even if I want to show it's tiny cinema I'm building, micro cinema, I think they call it. But even if you're going to show it, you still have to say it's a private screening members only. And nobody has tried that yet, but I'm going to try it because, um, you know, I've given up on everything else. I mean, I have to try it. I have no other 
way out. But uh, right now they they haven't been banning films lately, so it's a good sign. So we'll see. Yeah. Are there any other questions to ink from the audience? Um, so maybe also to come to a conclusion, uh, just just to talk about the latest projects you have been working on, which we're also going to show about Bangkok Joyride, the first two two parts. Um, well, they're going to be shown on Saturday evening. And you mentioned before, just um, so it's it's an ongoing project. We're going yeah. to show the first two parts, but it's... Uh, yeah, I'm recording history that people are pretending never happened. You talk about Arab Spring, you talk about all this blah, 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 how great people are heroes. If you see this film, I don't have to argue with you. You don't have to call They They made it seem like um, some kind of chinky, Lenny Riefen style, okay? You go and see that film and tell me if I'm Lenny Riefen style. There's no propaganda there. I just show you what's there. And you will be shocked. Why did I never see this on TV news? Why? Ask yourself, you know, just go see it. I don't try to convince anything. Just see it. I had to record that. It's history. How can we not record seven months of protests? Millions of people slept and thousands of them slept on the street for seven months. And in not dramatically, they were shot at, they were, you know, they were just stoically watching ordinary people being so calm and, and not retaliating. And it's very interesting how they arranged the campsite, how uh, you don't, part one and part two is not, uh, doesn't show it yet. But as it went on and people got angrier and angrier, they actually had meditation. So I don't laugh at religion, really. That's to answer your question. I mean, I could see it being very useful. Uh, they made people like meditate to send love to their enemies. They actually did that so that people would stay calm. To, it was really important to be um, Gandhian, to give absolutely no reason for the government uh, to kill you. They were killing you anyway, but relatively speaking. And you can't protest like that unless most of the people are on your side. It's not possible. Uh, I just found it very interesting the way they organize everything. And, and I think it's very useful for everybody else as well. Because it's, you, you know, you talk about uh, the propagandists, I'll call the spin doctors, will say, shut down Bangkok protests, it's evil elite propaganda, evil elite anti-democratic, blah, blah, blah. You watch it and tell me if these are anti uh, democratic, tell me if these, they are living democracy, they're laying their lives on the line. <laughs> you know, are, are they evil elite? Come and look, it's people of every class. So, see, you know, see for yourself. It's just so unfair and unjust, and I think it's very important that you show, record history, witness. Bear. For documentaries, I want to bear witness, and for feature film, you know, I want to exercise an exorcism. So I suppose that's really, yeah. Well, I, I would like to um, quote you, uh, namely from a blog which Inke is um, writing called Bangkok Love Letter, which uh, I, well, it's also in the address is written in the program of the Film Museum and I can just recommend to, to read it because apart from telling some very well, interesting insight, views of Thailand also shows another, uh, as I think, huge talent of yours, namely the writing. So Ink K writes bilingually in English and, and Thai. And uh, to just quote uh, from an example of what you just mentioned in your first love letter, you wrote, fear of dire consequences haunt us all, uh, haunt us all every waking breath and even as we sleep, but the consequences of silence are more terrifying still. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so th this blog may do maybe con conclude this discussion. Uh, could you talk a bit about writing, or in particular, this blog as a means of okay. expressing yourself? I I used to I've written a book. I used to be fairly well known as a writer, but I use uh, another name because I'm quite you know I'm not I don't like to people to know I'm a bit secretive. 
but um, and quite I was quite a senior, you know, investigative writer. But uh, for a long time, I could uh, even that I didn't have any voice anymore because the world had changed and the edit, you know, it's been doctors, PR, lobby. It's just a different world. So I started writing that blog after being very silent for so long because they were doing the same thing to a friend of mine, the same witch hunt, blacklisting witch hunt. The first blog I wrote was called Blacklisting Witch Hunt. They were doing it to another artist, calling him anti-democratic evil elite. And I can see the same thing happening to him. And it's really unfair because this guy, like me, has always talked about history, has always talked, been engaged with politics, been engaged with, you know, everything and I know that's bullshit and they were demanding that they remove his work from a museum in Korea it was like a big scandal and I wrote it in his defense because I couldn't take it anymore this this false witnessing this slander I mean it's no worse evil so yeah are there any more questions from the audience because if not, then I would yeah, like to thank you very, very much. And, and I also must say we are very happy to have somebody like you as our guest. And to, well, we are very glad to yeah, show thank you. Very, very glad to show your films from Friday on 4 p.m. at the Pupilla and then Saturday from 1 p.m. And the ink will be there. And anyway, we can oh. also... And can I just... I forgot to reply to you. And you said, what did I think about religion, right? Actually, I, I can worship in any temple, really, and I do. I, I just, I think it's spiritual theater. I like it. I like the incense thing. I like, you know, I actually make Hindu chants every day. I mean, I like it, but I know what it is. And um, I, you could say I respect them all, but I'm not, I don't like organized religion. Is that fair enough? Okay. Yeah, well, so I think we can also continue the discussion outside, and otherwise I invite you to come to um, well, from Friday on to the Pupilla. And Ingso, thank you very, very much for being here, and thanks for let, letting us showing the 60 millimeter pr print of, of this film. And Sorry, it's so dirty and damaged. Yeah. No, well, thank you very much, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Gary.